Has the Lord done great things in your life? Do you have a history where God has delivered you from different times, different periods, or who you once were? We need to bring to mind and bring to remembrance, our remembrance, what God has done in our lives so that we can be thankful for him, so that we can be reminded how faithful he has been in the past, because that will inspire our faith for the future. Here in Exodus chapter 13, um, we're going to be looking at God is going to start uh, asking the people of Israel to remember what has taken place here. And uh, we are together remembering what uh, what God did for the Israelites so that we can be reminded that God is a God of deliverances. He seeks to deliver his people out of the dangers, out of the clutches of, of the oppression that they're under. And so today, let's take a look at how we should be remembering in our own lives and in the lives of our, uh, in the life of our nation and the life of uh, all the the believers who have gone before us, as we have all found God faithful, we need to be remembering how faithful he is. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would open our hearts to what you have to say to us today, that you would bring to mind and to our remembrance the things that you have done to deliver us. Lord, if we are in a dark season, Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember when you were good and gracious to us. Lord, if we feel far off from you now, Lord, we pray that you would bring to mind when you were so very close. Lord, help us to set up uh, traditions and, and, and things to remind us of, of the good times in the past. Lord, help us to remember your faithfulness. Help us to never, never depart from you and to always walk with you for all the, the rest of our days. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Well, so great, great to have you guys all with us today. We are in Exodus chapter 13. Um, so if you get your Bibles and you want to turn with us, or if you just want to follow along on the screen, um, we got that up there. So the, the people have just left Egypt. The Passover has been celebrated, and the Egyptians have been uh, punished severely. The final plague of all the firstborn sons uh, have 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 perished, and the Israelites have been spared. And we're going to see that something is going to happen here to remind and to make sure this hits home for not just this generation of the Hebrews, but all generations of the Hebrews. Verse 1 of chapter 13 in Exodus. The Lord spoke to Moses, Consecrate every firstborn male to me, the firstborn from every womb among the Israelites. Both man and domestic animal, it is mine. So God has spared all the firstborns of Israel, but now he, he says that they belong to him. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day when you came out of Egypt, out of the place of slavery, for the Lord brought you out of here by the strength of his hand. Nothing leavened may be eaten. Today, in the month of uh, Ab uh, Abib, uh, you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, Hethites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors that he would give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you must carry out this ceremony in this month. For seven days you must eat unleavened bread. And in the seventh day, there is to be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread is to be eaten for those seven days. Nothing leavened may be found among you, and no yeast may be found among you in all your territory. On that day, explain to your son, this is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. Let it serve as a sign for you on your hand and as a reminder on your forehead, so that the Lord's instruction may be in your mouth. The Lord brought you out of Egypt with a strong hand. Keep this statute at its appointed time from year to year. So they're being given this festival. They were giving 
the Passover, but then also the Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days out of the course of every year, the Jewish nation is to remember that uh, that they were once slaves and that God delivered them. Throughout the Old Testament, we're going to see that constantly the Jewish nation has pointed back to this time, to this great deliverance that God has done, that, that they were taken out of slavery, that God rescued them. And because of that, because of that deliverance, because of that faithfulness of God, every time in the future that God's faithfulness is called into question, they are pointed back to this event. And just as the Old Testament saints were all pointed back to the Exodus every time they started to question the love of God, we, New Testament believers, in this day and age, are called throughout the New Testament to look back at the cross of Jesus Christ, to answer and settle all questions about how much God loves us. The mercy and forgiveness of God is proved on the cross. But for the Old Testament believers, before they knew about Jesus and the cross, they didn't have all the answers. They didn't have all the specifics. They were pointed back to the Exodus to be that great remembrance of the faithfulness and love of God. So this is supposed to be something that they're supposed to do for all generations, for all time. And they still celebrate it to this day. In verse 11, it says, When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your ancestors and gives it to you, you are to present the Lord every firstborn male of the womb. All firstborn offspring of the livestock you own that are males will be the Lord's. You must redeem every firstborn donkey with the flock animal. But if you do not redeem it, break its neck. However, you must redeem every firstborn among your sons. So every firstborn belongs to the Lord. We have the concepts of tithing. We have this concept of giving offerings to the Lord to show that he is the ruler. He is the king. Well, God is exercising his authority and his rights over every firstborn. And they are to recognize this in order to... uh, to to celebrate the Lord's uh, authority and kingship over the nation. Do you and I need to do this? We don't, unless you're a Jew. If you're following the the law of Moses, you, you had better do that. So why, right? Verse 14, we have, uh, when your son asks why, in the future, when your son asks you, What does this mean? Say to him, by the strength of his hand, the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed every firstborn male in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of humans and the firstborn of livestock. That is why I sacrificed the Lord all the firstborn of the womb that are males, but I redeem all the firstborn of my sons. So let it be a sign on your hand and a symbol on your forehead. For the Lord brought us out of Egypt by the strength of his hand. Are you starting to catch this this major theme that God doesn't want them to forget? God doesn't want to deliver them and then have them just kind of move on with their lives. They're supposed to keep revisiting in their mind and in their remembrance. They're supposed to instruct their next generation about the faithfulness of God. Is this something you see in your life? Is you going over and over and over again and sharing with others the deliverance that you have seen in your life from God, is this a major theme of your life? That you cannot get over the grace of God. You cannot get over what God has done. And if anyone will allow you to speak, they're going to get an earful from you about what God has done, how faithful he has been. We need to preach that to other people. We need to testify that to other people. But first, we need to start by testifying to ourselves. It says, let it be um, a marker on your, your, your hand and on your forehead. 
your identity. When everybody looks at you and they see you coming, they're going to recognize you by your face. If you have it written on your forehead, it means everybody who meets you is not going to be able to avoid the fact that God has delivered you. It's going to be so core to your identity that people cannot see you without, oh yeah, she or he was delivered by God. They're going to come over here and tell us about that again, probably. And on the back of your hand, wherever you go, you're constantly looking at the back of your hand. Um, I have a watch on. It's on the back of my hand. Why is that? Because it's the most convenient place to put something that you're constantly looking at, right? I constantly look at my watch right on the back of my hand. And that's where the reminders are supposed to be of God's presence, God's deliverance in the past. Let these things be upon our hands and our foreheads. Doesn't mean you're supposed to put a little box there. Later on, we're going to see that God's going to command them to do this very thing with, with the word of God. Let it be on your forehead. And the Pharisees in Jesus' day, they like made these little boxes and put some scripture in there. And then they, they hung it on their forehead. Orthodox Jews still do this. It doesn't mean to do that literally, literally, like put a box on your forehead. But rather, it's supposed to be constantly in your life and affecting your life. You're not supposed to be able to get away from it. It's not like you go to church once a week and then, then you know, go do whatever you want to do the rest of your week. Let us have the deliverance of God constantly on our mind, the faithfulness of God constantly on our mind, constantly giving thanks and singing with joy in our hearts for what he has done for us. Do you think the people leaving Egypt were happy? Yeah, yeah, probably. Do you think the people that were leaving Egypt 30 years later were happy? They probably got used to it, right? Uh, we see that they start murmuring and mumbling and grumbling out in the wilderness, and God has to start striking a whole bunch of them dead. <laughs> Not good. They. They can't help but murmur after a while. They forget the deliverance of God. They start even saying stupid things like, it would be better if we were still back in Egypt. You mean where you were slaves? Like, seriously? You want to go back to Egypt and go back to slavery? <laughs> you can understand why God got a little upset with them. A little upset when they forgot the deliverance that he had brought to their lives. When they forgot the good things that he did for them. And how their lives were completely changed for the better. They became free. They became an independent nation. Where they once had no hope for their children, they now had hope and a future for their children. How many of our lives have been transformed by God's power and work and mercy and his grace. Many of us, if not most of us, I don't know. Maybe God hasn't touched your life yet. Maybe you're just still trying to check out what, what's going on here. But for those of you whose lives have been changed, how easy is it to forget? To start murmuring about a bad day. I, I had a, a bad day. I guess it was kind of yesterday, and I don't know, I had a couple of bad days, and just like, you know, just when everything just kind of goes wrong, everything's just more difficult than it should be, and it's easy to start murmuring and not go, you know, I still have it really good, you know? I'm still saved by God. I still have an eternal destination in heaven. If God has saved us, let us never forget that. It's kind of hard to complain when you're remembering how good things are. When you're being thankful, it's hard to complain. That's where we should live and dwell. Verse 17 here. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them out along the road to the land of the Philistines. There's a highway that goes from Egypt up to, you know, like the Jerusalem area 
and and the central um, Canaan at that time, but or nowadays central Israel, you know, right along the coast. They could have just hopped on the highway and just walked right up there. It would have taken them a few days, maybe a week to get up there, and there they would be. But God did not lead them along the road to the land of the Philistines, even though it was nearby. For God said, the people will change their minds and return to Egypt if they face a war. So he led the people around toward the Red Sea along the road of the wilderness. And the Israelites left the land of Egypt in battle formation. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear a solemn oath, saying, God will certainly come to your aid. Then you must take my bones with you from this place. So if you were with us for the journey through Genesis, you remember that that was the last chapter in the book of Genesis. Moses, uh, Joseph said, take my bones with you when you go into the promised land. So they take his bones. They fulfill their promise. They set out from Succoth and camped at Etham in the, on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to lead them on their way during the day and a pillar of fire to give them light at night. They were literally following God. They could see the cloud, the pillar of cloud. They could see the pillar of fire. They were not taking things by faith in the sense of they could not see anything. They literally could see the, the fire ahead of them in the sky. It says, so that they could travel day or night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night never left its place in front of the people. You can just imagine this. It's like, if you were Moses, right? And you were leading the people and like there's a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud at day. Um, they, they are delivered by 10 great plagues against the Egyptians. You would be, uh, it would seem to be reasonable to say that no one will ever question Moses as his leadership ever could not possibly happen. And we haven't even seen all that will happen yet. Some more miraculous things will be taking place in the next uh, number of days here in our study. And it is mind blowing. And then yet we're going to see the people turn on Moses. We're going to see the people turn on God. It's crazy. Never underestimate the capacity of human beings to grumble, murmur, create dissension, and just act in all sorts of stupid ways. It's our nature, I guess. It's our nature. So we have these powerful symbols, the things that they can see. They're not speculating about, well, maybe Moses is just really good at doing tricks. No. No, they can literally see the deliverance of God before them. They're following the Lord out into the wilderness. Now, it's not the way they should be going. It's not the easy way. It's not the quick way. But perhaps you have experienced this too. God does not often lead us the quick and easy way to where he's taking us. He takes us out into the wilderness and says, you must first become what you need to become. You need to first come out from Egypt and come out and be with me in the wilderness for a while. Has anyone else experienced that? Where God must first shape who you are before he leads you into what you are to do. God is always at work, and when it, he's leading us out into the wilderness and we are going, why in the world are we going this way? God is not so interested in what he's going to do through you as he is in what he is going to do first in you. God is looking for faithful people, people who have been changed by him to be used. But we must first be changed by him. We must first have this encounter with God. And he brings this to the people of Israel and says, remember, Never forget these days. Never forget these events. Pass them on from generation to generation for thousands of years. Never forget my faithfulness to you. 
And to their credit, the Jewish nation still celebrates these uh, these holidays. They still seek to remember what God did long ago for them. Let us remember back to the long agos of our lives of what God was faithful to us. Before we go, let me say a prayer, prayer, blessing over you. And then we'll let you go to your day and all the things that God has for you today. Let's pray. Lord God, I just pray that you bless each and every one watching this video today, that you fill them with your presence, that you fill our minds with remembrance of what you have done for us, the moments where we felt like we could all but just reach out and touch you. We saw your hand at work. We were filled with awe. We're filled with the love of God. Lord, help us to remember those things. Help us to set up the little, the little uh, reminders. Help us to set up traditions that we would never forget, that we would always give you thanks, and that we would never question your goodness all the days of our lives after having seen you do so much for us. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. All right, friends, so glad to have you here, and I look forward to seeing you guys again here tomorrow. Until then, God bless you all, and have a great and wonderful day.